سلام Everybody here knows everything about everything. The more you learn about others, the more you deepen your understanding of yourself. This is the journey we are all on. So, to my convenience, they have delayed the projection of the last film in the future film festival that I was yet to see, so that I could participate at the award ceremony and find out, live, who was winning. Which is, again, very convenient for me and for everyone else who didn't want to miss out on either event. So I'll go through this real quickly. The second prize went to the Wolf House, which I can get absolutely behind. The Wolf House is great, a great allegory and a great deconstruction of propaganda filmmaking and how indoctrination works to the human mind, definitely deserving of any kind of award. Now, the film who actually won the Grand Platinum Prize, or was it Platinum Grand Platinum? The, the prize was coincidentally also the film I was going to watch later on. Window Horses, Canada, 2017, 85 minutes, directed by Anne Marie Fleming. There is a butterfly. Anyway. This is the film that won, and after watching it, yes, I would have to agree. For once, I'm actually in favor of the decision of awarding a film. I am not usually on the same mindset with the jury when it comes to determining a winner. After all, I remind you, last year's winner was Liam Neeson is a tree movie. You know, it wasn't good. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't anything, really. Now, Window Horses, this is definitely something. There is an interesting stylistic choice in this film, in that the main character is drawn like a stick figure, not unlike Don Hertzfield's, but at the same time completely different. So yes, contrary to popular belief, stick figures, or humanoids in stick figures, can be its own complex, multi-layered art style. Who knew? Anyway, she's the only one designed in that way, for some reason. I believe if the end credits are to be believed that she's a character known as Stick Girl, so, on a metatextual standpoint, I guess she's a character that exists outside of this film and outside of the graphic novel she is uh, based from, which were written by the same person who directed the film. Everyone else, every other human in the picture, hmm, how do I describe them? They are a combination of a Cubist painting and a French Expressionist painting. Specifically, one side is Picasso, the other is Matisse. That's how their faces look. Which is an interesting choice, an artistic choice, and I'll get to that. So the story of this film is actually fairly simple, but it is uh, fertile territory for thematic exploration of the butterfly kind, I mean of the intellectual and emotionally fulfilling kind. Butterflies. So, as I was saying, the story is that uh, this girl of uh, Chinese descent from the side of her mother, she's actually Canadian, nationality-wise, Rosie Ming is a 
aspiring poet who wishes to be traveling to Paris and uh, you know experiencing other cultures and whatnot she gets her wish in the most unexpected of ways she gets invited to a poetry festival that takes place in the city of Shiraz in Iran so that's an interesting turn of events the reason why she was invited to Iran becomes apparent as the film goes on as also apparent becomes the fact that she is also of Iranian descent from father's side and the whole film becomes a journey of both discovery and self-discovery both historically and cultural self-discoveries as it were a personal journey to broadening one's own artistic and cultural integrity and growing up as a person that is the whole point of the journey that the main heroine undertakes as well as also finding out parallel to that what happened to her father which we the audience learn abandoned her when she was seven and from this point on, from the moment she gets off to Iran and meets new people and experiences new different poetry and the artistic history and cultural heritage of Iran as well as China, which is her other side of the family, the film essentially becomes almost akin to an educational film about the rich and the interesting culture of the country of Iran as well as its tradition with poetry and literature but it's you know it's not exactly an educational film that's just my own shorthand of putting it truthfully it's not condescending or patronizing enough to be a educational film rather it tries to involve you uh, through the proxy of the main heroine in the various discoveries that she and again by proxy we make and parallel to the cultural heritage of Iran and her essentially coming to better understand where she comes from and also where she is going as a person there is also as I mentioned before the research of her own father and his own history which coincides with the history of the country of Iran since the Islamic Revolution till today and it never stops being interesting it never stops being sincere about what's intentions are because at the end of the day what this film really is about it's about cultural and artistic borders and how to eradicate them by sharing the art and culture of a place of a given part of the world a point of view or a poem or art in general this film is about the true intent of art broadening one's own horizons in order to grow better as a person and better understanding the world the cultures and the various artistic outputs that exist out there outside of your confines outside of your own intellectual and artistic borders the whole point of the main character is that she's never left her own hometown she's never really come into terms or discovered more than she really needed to about her own heritage about anything outside of her own comfort zone so this trip to Iran becomes enlightening not so much as a vacational video visit beautiful Iran we have the tombs of many poets here no it's really more broadly about the importance of art as an instrument of communication an instrument to tear down literal and metaphorical borders and to me personally this greatly connects with me 
but the impact that it had on me was far more understated at first because I only slowly started to realize how much I like this film the more I started to think about it. So I went into my own journey with my mind, exploring the multifaceted nature of this particular piece of art, realizing that this serves as a brilliant reminder of why I like to come to this future film festival each and every year, to broaden my horizons, to go out of my usual comfort zone as far as intellectual and artistic habits are concerned, to experience a different point of view, a different culture through the guise, the artistic medium of cinema and animation. It seems like such a simple, such an obvious notion that nobody really thinks about it because it's one thing to have a guy, me, telling you that art is important for this or that other reason, but it's another story altogether when it is the art itself, this film to be exact. This film... <laughs> This film right here, when it's the film that reminds you what art is really all about. It is a window, hence the title, Window Horses, get it? It is a window to different countries and cultures and heritages outside of your window of your metaphorical window, so to speak, but still waiting to be shared and celebrated for what they are. Because it is by, again, by tearing down the borders of intellectual and emotional nearsightedness that we can grow as people. This is what art should be all about. And what's really good, what's really great and functional about this film is how easy it makes it look. How easy it makes it look to just share. Because it should be easy. By all accounts, it should be easy. So yes, I'm really glad that this was the last film I watched in this year's festival, which was the 20th edition, by the way. Congratulations, Triple F. I'm glad I have been part of this, even as just a spectator, for the past five or six years. It's been a while already. I enjoy coming here, I enjoy the atmosphere, I enjoy the experience, even though I end up complaining more often than none. But, again, it is so nice to be reminded why I love coming here, why I love to experience the art of cinema and animation. And it's so especially nice when it is the last film I watch in this week's edition of the festival in this year's edition of the festival, I should say, it is so nice that it is this that reminds me why I love coming here. It is also extremely convenient that it was the last I watched so that I could tie it up with my final addressing of the festival overall. This year's was a solid edition, perhaps one of the more solid ones. It had a lot in terms of variety, a lot of countries represented, South Korea, Japan, you name them. The retrospective to the career of uh, Isao Takahata, despite my misgivings, and they were many, it was good, it was great. I liked experiencing that, I liked going back to that and also broadening my own horizons when it concerns this specific author. It was fun. Cinema. The art of cinema. Animation. It's so fun.
And that, that's about it, folks. What else is there to say? This has been Mad Dog Die Master. See you next year. Same Triple F time, same Triple F channel. Good night.